Hello, you beautiful gods and goddesses. This is Tawanda Van Celestial Earth Goddess. And today, I want to talk about knowing when to let go. Knowing when a season has ended in a situation, especially an intimate relationship. Okay, um, I've always had these thoughts, but this show that I was looking at over the past month or two really made it hit home. It's this show called Put a Ring on it on the own network. You know, she got at least two shows, maybe three or four on there where it's about it's promoting black love, which is a beautiful thing. It's always a beautiful thing. Now, this show is about men and women who have been in relationships two or more years, but they haven't set a well, they haven't proposed or set a date yet. But one of them wants to get married and the other one is hesitant for whatever reason. And this one couple on there, they have been together for nine years. Um, the background is during year five, um, the guy, well, the woman basically let him know that she was ready to get married. You know, and he was like, he, he was fine with their relationship the way it was. So basically she said, well, you know, I want to be married. And if we're not married, then I need to move on. Of course, the guy felt it was an ultimatum. Some people going to say it is, it ain't. It really don't matter. She had a right to speak her truth, just like if it was in reverse. So he decided that he was going to ask her to marry him. Well, he did this elaborate proposal where um, she, her family and his family came. He invited them. I think it was like in a movie theater. Like he rented out this movie theater or something. He just made it into like a, a Disney-like production. Now, so she starts planning the wedding. It's a destination wedding people buying passports and shit well uh at some point he got scared and said he wasn't ready so she like you know let me know because because you know this deposit after a while they're gonna take it so he started going back and forth so she called it off well he called it off technically so she just stopped the wedding planning and, and you know stopped the destination part then he came back saying, yeah, he wanted to do it. And then he came back saying he wanted to see other people. Well, this caused some craziness to happen in their relationship. Now, here's where the problem lied. One of them should have had the strength to leave the fucking relationship if they weren't getting what they wanted. But for whatever reason, she stayed for four extra years now around year six or seven no i think it was year seven he came back and he was like i'm ready i'm ready this time you ain't got to worry about me backing out well of course by now she's scared she ain't trying to feel what the hell he's saying they love each other but she is just not in a safe place to where she wants to marry to where she wants to accept any proposal from him so they stay together for an extra two years so you know that's the where the total of nine years came from okay so they're one of the three couples on this show all right the other part of the show is people are dating um they get to date other people to basically see if if it's just an issue of you know they need to work out an issue so they can get married or if they simply just stayed in a relationship too long and they need to break away well this particular couple that was there for that was with each other for nine years the woman actually formed a connection with one of the guys she was dating. Like, this was guy number four. Now, I think the first two times, you know, she was kind of, she kind of didn't accept the second date because of the way he was acting. And the fact that she wasn't into light-skinned dudes because she really liked herself, you know. She just wasn't into light-skinned dudes. So, she obviously had a type. The third guy was her type, but she felt like he, compared to who she was with, he was extremely calm. And then the fourth guy was, was like, the just... A just right mixture of calm and you know pizzazz or whatever she went on as far as we know on the show she went on five dates with him now of course they only show us snippets of the dates but you could tell the dates were probably two hours or more and she confirmed that on her live and he confirmed that they went on six dates so somewhere along the line we didn't see a date I want to know what happened on that six date person well on one on that one date we didn't get to see but anyway so she really really liked this dude and he really really liked her so they ended up forming a connection well she decided to tell him because she wasn't sure what she wanted to do that you know not to pursue her anymore 
Now, here's the thing. Well, no, it like I'll go into that another time. This is just simply about knowing when to let fucking go. Okay, so the man that she was with is he? He already said he was ready to ask her to marry him. So of course. The three dudes, they all got rings and they all proposed. Okay, she said yes to him, but it was like, why are you saying yes? You could tell she ain't had no business saying yes to him. And she wasn't, <clears throat> excuse me, although they loved each other, I don't think she's she was um, in love with him any longer. I feel like I'm talking too fast. My bad if I am. But I feel like she wasn't in love with him any longer. And she loved him and didn't want to hurt his feelings because that's one of the things she said. She didn't want to hurt his feelings. And I think because they had been together so long, she just didn't know how to fucking let go. Well, after she accepted the proposal, and she also said she accepted the proposal for the potential. Never a good thing. Never, ever, ever a good thing. Okay. So, during the reunion, you find out that they are technically separated. Like, they're, to, they're still in a relationship, but they're not living in the same space. She's still in Atlanta, and he is in, like, I think he goes from Houston to Louisiana, because both of them are originally from New Orleans, but um, he went to go see his family doing, you know, doing the holidays and shit, and he also goes to Houston, because I don't think they ever got rid of their house in Houston or wherever they lived, so, um, so they're separated, but initially, they really, they really didn't say that on the show. You find out in interviews from like different YouTubers and stuff that they, you know, they made that more clear. Well, it's obvious that she still, <laughs> she still has feelings for the dude she went on a date with based on the live they did. I was on the live, you know, in the comment section. I was on both of their lives. Um, first, I was on his. Somebody came from his live to go to hers and let her know that he was live. And she was like, telling him to come on basically to explain what happened on the on the show bottom line the same thing that she said during the process is the same thing she said during the reunion and the same thing she pretty much said or alluded to on that live so it's like everybody is like why are you why are y'all engaged furthermore why you accepted the proposal and why did he propose Y'all, y'all should really go look at this show. It's it's very interesting, especially if you, if you like seeing how human behavior works. You definitely need to look at this show. Mainly from my gist of it, it just reiterated what I have been saying about people for years. Some people just don't know when to accept that their relationship is fucking over. We all, all relationships have a season. Some last for a short period of time. <clears throat> And some last for a lifetime. I think they would do very well as friends. I don't think they should they should be together, personally. And both of them are great people. They just not good for each other in a rom in a romantic sense. You know what I'm saying? And it really, if nothing else, people should learn that they need to know when the fuck to let go. That's one thing I can pride myself on. I don't stay in a relationship that's done too long because that happened to me in 19 like I was in a relationship it was, the the totality of the relationship was like six months the first two months were cool the third month he started acting a damn fool things just and and I'm not saying this to malign him I'm just speaking fucking facts he just would get triggered by any and everything it's like he was triggered by life the least little thing that was said he just passed and i was never used to people acting that way and it was just like the first time it happened it caught me off the fuck guard it's like is he serious or is he joking and it i didn't know whether to be mad or laugh like it was just and it also dealing with that relationship taught me how some people easily end up in an abusive situation now fortunately for me we were long distance like we were literally on opposite sides of the of the um united states and it was so it was mostly so our contact was like facetime phone calls and all the other stuff but that relationship from month three to month six was draining as hell mentally and emotionally 
um, for a month forward, we didn't even communicate with each other because the motherfucker hung up in my face. <laughs> so, of course, yeah, no, I'm not talking to you. And month four, I was like, okay, yeah, this, this obviously is not supposed to be, and I'm going to end it. But then he popped back up. So we were supposed to be working on it, but it seemed like I was the only one making efforts to do anything. He was still doing the same things, trying to um, control the control the the situation through communication by only um, like rationing out time. You know, you know, in a long distance relationship, communication is definitely a major part of it. Like, if y'all ain't talking to each other, what's the point? And and one thing I am so grateful for my spiritual crew. When I say my spiritual crew, I'm talking about my ancestors, any spiritual practitioner that I dealt with. This, cause this fucking relationship would pop up anytime. Like for instance, if I got a reading about something, I wouldn't even be talking about this shit, and and the damn relationship would pop the fuck up. So, my ancestors made sure we didn't end up meeting. Um, we didn't end up in the same space at any given time, cause every time he was supposed to get a ticket for me to go it didn't end up happening and you know the can okay the cancer side of me was like leave this motherfucker alone something ain't right about him this 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 is just him this ain't no isolated incident we need to to exit stage motherfucking left right back forth whatever now my moon sign is in gemini and my venus so you know how y'all air signs are. You can be real analytical about shit. And what I noticed about air signs is y'all will stay in some fuck shit forever. And I think it's because y'all are able to emotionally detach from it. And you don't don't say you don't emotionally attach because you do. I'm a Gemini moon and I'm an Aquarius rising. So I, I understand that energy just as well as the cancer part. But I was like, okay, yeah, something is wrong with him. But you know what? We're going to see... We're going to see if this is just an isolated incident or if it's just a miss or, or if this is really him and then we'll determine it. The cancer side of me was like, bitch, leave. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> now, this may not make sense to some people and it may make sense to others. But my point is, you know, I was having that inner conflict. One, my intuition was telling me, move. The analytical part of me is like, okay. Yeah, but we need we need confirmation. That's the analog, the air part of me, which is my masculine side, always needs fucking confirmation, which gets on my nerves as a cancer. Period. Oh, and since I'm talking about my stuff, let me talk about his shit. Okay, his moon, his sun, moon, and rising were all three in water signs: Scorpio, Cancer, Moon, Scorpio, Rising. As a cancer, I love my water signs. But somebody that got that much water in their chart and they're in prominent places in their chart, if y'all don't manage your, your um, emotions very well, y'all can be very cuckoo. It's not good. Like, it's hard to deal with y'all asses. Mm. So I realized I need somebody with like complimentary energies, <laughs> like an earth fire mix. But anyway, but my whole point in saying all this shit is I figured out it took me it took three to six month three to six for me to finally be like okay this shit is this shit is not working it's like it, it took me it took a process for me to be like okay I'm done done now so I broke up with the person because it needed to be done now of course he tried to act like he was cool about it at first and I was for me I had no problem with being friends with him because I just because we were friends before that and I'm like well we made good friends we just didn't do well in the romantic part well two months after the fact matter of fact two days before Christmas he just spewed all this stuff out and I was like damn oh I am so glad I left like that was this is confirmation of nothing else because he still was trying to be ver he still was trying to be verbally abusive and he had this, and it was obvious that he had some narcissistic traits that I was not fucking with. You know what I'm saying? So that's just my experience on knowing when the fuck to let go. Although I kind of beat myself up because I didn't let go during month three. But the fact that 
I did it within six months. I'm proud of myself because some people last in those types of in those type of relationships for years and years. And I'm gonna tell you, usually verbal abuse ends up becoming physical abuse. So anytime somebody talking shit to you, you need to leave their asses alone. Further, especially. But even if there's nothing like blatantly wrong in the relationship, you still need to go if you don't want to be there <laughs> simple as that the person can be a great guy the person can be a great woman but if you ain't feeling them let them fucking go let them fucking go stop staying and shit you ain't got no business in and like if you don't learn nothing else from that show what you learn is you either shit or get off the motherfucking pot one of the two simple as that and that's some real talk it's just like wow we're, we're like i'm like seeing this and even though it's some stuff we didn't see you don't have to see a whole bunch of stuff to see when somebody ain't right especially if you're looking at it from the outside looking in you could have a, you tend to have a better perspective of things because the show you know some people like to blame the shows for the for a couple's problems no they had problems before that show they were underlying issues that they just didn't dealt with because you know they're they're both of them are trying to like it's almost like they're trying to convince us in some way that they should have they should still be together especially the guy because he really wants to hold on to the relationship for dear life but the girl obviously don't but she feels she feels this sense of loyalty to him that that she shouldn't have it's unfounded like you can love him, but you don't have to be with him. And he needs to just accept the fact that their relationship is not the way it was. I'm very sure they probably should have left around year five or six and just stayed friends, but they didn't. So this is the consequence of staying too long in a relationship. Now, just think about some situations where there's real issues like, well, let me not, when I say real issues, I mean like, there's outright abuse now in this situ situation there was some verbal abuse going on during this show because you know of course under the circumstances there was some jealousy and stuff like that especially from him because you know he just wasn't feeling it but this is what they signed up for they signed up to be on that show so they had to they had to go through the process that's just part for the course and there was nothing wrong with him feeling how he felt he just should have handled it better um i think i'm rambling now so i'm just gonna kind of cut i'm just in this in this with this look if you're in a situation right now where you don't know if you want to be there and you're in you're you're you love the person but you ain't in love with them no more even if they have good qualities and you probably have people in your ear saying he's a good man she's a good woman why would you leave them they're this that and the third it don't matter if they a good man or a good woman. Are they good for you? Are they right for you? And if your answer is no, then just put your big girl draws and your big boy draws on and end it. End it, end it, end it, end it. End it. Don't let the person beg. Don't let the person do don't let the person talk you into staying. None of that. As how how that thing go? Don't pass go. Don't collect two hundred dollars. Just fucking go. Go, 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 go. You know, you can do it with compassion. End the shit with compassion. Unless the motherfucker's scary as fuck and he crazy. Then ghost his ass. That's the only time I would condone ghosting. If somebody could possibly threaten your life. You don't owe them shit. At all. Just leave that motherfucker. Fuck him or fuck her. Because it, it could be a she too. Because there's some women out there that abuse men too. You know. Men, we, we see it. We know it. You know, the... You have to do the same thing we've been forced to do for eons. You have to keep on advocate, advocating for your fucking safety. And don't let the police tell you because you a man, you should be able to handle yourself. Okay? Now, I'm done. And I hope I gave some insight. Although, I feel like I might have kind of jumbled all over the place. But I feel like, but I believe you get where I'm going with this. Okay? So, until next time, you beautiful gods and goddesses, I bid you adieu.